myself uh, Giri. I do work on computer aided drug designing and uh, passion to teach and share knowledge to others. So recently we can see a lot of tutorials and how to do things and what not to do things. But still uh, there is a question that relies that it's still left out understanding uh, what to be done. What is the right protocol for certain kind of cases or certain kind of situations? So this is very trivial because you cannot apply same protocol for all types of data that you are going to uh, use it for your studies. So that is what we are trying to do. Uh, last time I uh, did a video on whether minimization is required for uh, ligand before molecular docking. Now we are looking at protein minimization whether it is required for molecular docking. Moving forward let me tell you very precisely that is protein minimization and protein preparation they are not same. They both are different and for different purpose. And based on certain software requirement it is mandatory that you have to do protein minimization or protein preparation. But then do not consider it as a black box. Try to have a control and understanding of each of the parameters and the factors or properties that you are going to extract from these uh, two kinds of protocol. So let me go through a few of the aspects. We assume the force field might have a or better describe the geometry than any other elucidated structures. But sometimes if you are not using the right force field, you might end up with artifacts. And sometimes we also try to s do minimization to eliminate crystal packing artifacts because uh, when you are trying to come up with a PDB structure, it is a solid state like in a periodic, like a crystal structure, it is extracted from there. So we need to see how the crystal packing is done properly. For example, it could be a monomer or a dimer or a, a multiple like even water molecules are there. Then uh, uh, bound ligands are there, cofactors are there, metal ions could be there. So we need to pack it properly so that uh, we need to eliminate artifacts. Sometimes minimizations are required or to be used in that situations. But we have to uh, really think uh, when it is required. So there might be some missing residues uh, in X-ray crystal structures or PDB. Don't think that um, uh, uh, when you're looking at science, X-ray crystal structures are the most accurate ones. No, never. It all depends upon the electron density maps, how, how it is being fitting properly to the coordinates of amino acids. NMR is somewhere better than uh, X-ray. Uh, the limitation is uh, your molecule to be or the crystals should be soluble. Uh, but in most of the proteins, it's X-ray diffraction or cryo-AM uh, were recently being talked about a lot. So when you're adding some missing residues to your structures, if any, then minimization is required. And force field also being used might be different or usually it is different from that is used to optimize a PDB from X-ray data. I don't know how many of you are aware from X-ray diffraction data, how do you end up with getting a PDB structure? So you basically get the diffraction points and then electron density map. There also you will do similar kind of homology modeling. In homology modeling, you're using sequence as your uh, starting point to model using a template. The same way in your X-ray diffraction data to a protein structure, you do have electron density map and also you have to consider a template uh, to come up with the final PDB structure. So those kinds uh, of uh, factors to be considered. Now what is you mean by protein preparation? Making protein more suitable for computational experiments because we have to define certain uh, uh, parameters uh, we have to add uh, hydrogens. Adding hydrogens is not simply adding. We have to understand the directions, orientations, these factors to be taken care. Now you might think, okay, software takes or does this automatically. This automatic has lot of issues. 
So as a human uh, expertise, we have to look into it, whether software has done it properly or not. Whatever you're doing on tutorial, it will work because people, uh, for example, if I am making the two, I know that it works. So tutorial, it works. The question is whether it works for your biological system or a macromolecule. So we want to also optimize the directions that the hydrogens are facing. And then we try to reproduce the crystal structure if it has a bound ligand. That is where you get RMSDs less than one amp strong. So the direction of the hydrogen is very, very important. That's what we call it as protonation. But protonation, we usually think of adding of a hydrogen, but optimizing hydrogen's directions, orientations are also very trivial. There are certain algorithms takes care of that. But you have to ensure that is this right or not? And we have the freedom to modify that. So that is what uh, we have to always look into it and never uh, get biased or confused with these kinds of uh, analysis that you're going to take care of it, okay? Moving forward, what are the factors that you have to consider, whether to minimize or not the crystal structures? When you have a very high resolution crystal structures where the electron density map is fitted properly to the amino acid coordinates, I mean, protein minimization is not required. If still a software is asking, it is a requirement of the software that you have to perform protein minimization. Now, whether to optimize, uh, uh, and the second part is that we have to optimize the positions of hydrogen because you added hydrogens. So when you download the PDB, uh, usually you don't have hydrogens uh, in the PDB file. So we have to add them. So when you protonate it, we have to also optimize the positions of the hydrogen which are being added to the crystal structure. Now there you don't do a very uh, deep way or detailed way of uh, minimization. I'll discuss about that. But when you're optimizing the positions of hydrogen, ensure that you freeze or constrain all the heavy atoms and you minimize only the hydrogens. That's what we have to take care. Now many softwares takes care of that, but check it out. When you don't have a bound ligand to your crystal structure, do not minimize a structure without the ligand inside it, as the binding site might just collapse. This is mainly I'm trying to tell you when you're trying to apply a molecular dynamics based minimization. But minimize it with the steepest decent algorithm, not with MD protocols that could make your atoms move away if the protein have a small bump in your starting structure. So it is always important that uh, what algorithm or protocol you choose for minimization. So minimize only if you add the hydrogen, of course you have to add, and try to optimize the hydrogens, keeping all the other heavy atoms frozen or uh, constrained. And uh, do not try to do a detailed MD protocol. MD based minimization is required when you are adding any missing residues or mutating it or uh, even uh, a loop refinement or you came up with a homology model structure uh, then you have to consider it and finally what is this protein preparation the key factors and uh, um, um, the steps that you have to consider is uh, you have to check alternate locations of multiple conformations of amino acids so in crystallography uh, when you come up with electron density map there could be uh, different locations of the same amino acids. So uh, you have to check them. It is not that delete one and use the other one, no. You have to understand these are the alternate positions of the specific amino acid. If the position A is considered, what could be the outcome? If position B is considered or position C is considered, what is the outcome? So you have to check it and then analyze and then choose the, uh, either all of them and try to compare it rather than deleting it and doing it. Then you have to protonate it, check tautomers, check the orientation. So you are adding hydrogens and optimizing it. Check the amino acid flipping and the direction of the hydrogen. Define your cofactors, ligands, metal ions, and the water molecules. You have to know which are the key water molecules because explicit condition is being anyway uh, considered. And you have to define the site, the binding site, understanding the motif catalytic site and key amino acids. It's not that you have a, a pocket identifying tool 
just identifying a pocket within the protein and you say that is the binding site. No, it could be, but you need to also understand is there any key amino acids uh, within those pocket uh, predicted by the tool. A good protocol can be uh, confident in your result. So understand what the right protocol to be applied for your protein based upon its quality and other data availability. And that's where you have more confidence in your result. And to conclude, understand the existing knowledge. Understand what is your protein is having, uh, what is the limitation it has, what is the quality, what is the resolution, how it reflects to. And based on that, make decision whether you have to do minimization. Anyway, protein preparation is mandatory for your docking analysis anyway. So that you cannot avoid. But protein minimization required or not? In some cases it is required and in most cases it is not required if it is an extra crystal structure. If it is a homology model structure, of course you require it. And the second point is tutorials are just how to do it, but not about what to take care of it. So you should, should take care of it. So um, tutorials are really helpful for you to understand how to proceed with the uh, protocol. But you have to have an understanding of uh, what uh, should be taken care of with the data that you're using for the tutorial. The tutorial is already defined what kind of data you to use because that is already known and they have analyzed it, which is the data that to be taken. But for your problem, you are the master, right? So you need to know what the data to be taken for that particular protocol. That's why it is said good synergetics between human expertise and computational tools will make wonders and surprises of fine uh, discoveries. Try to avoid missed opportunities. Without, you, without knowing what protocol to be used, you use simply everything what is being already reported or someone else used, and you might miss something very important in your data because you used a irrelevant protocol there. And understand the significance of parameters or properties. If you're making a change in the direction of the hydrogen, uh, you have to also understand how it is going to affect the interaction, how it is going to affect the distance between them. If you read uh, uh, the paper from uh, Protoss, uh, you, uh, it is very well defined about the directions of hydrogen, how it is going to impact the distance. Of course, the distance might be a difference of 0 0.02 Armstrong or 0 0.05 Armstrong, but that makes a lot of uh, difference when you're going to interpret the molecular docking outcome. Evaluate and decide the tool and approach. Rather than deciding that, okay, many are using uh, Autodoc, I will also use Autodoc. Or many are using Doc6, I will also use Doc6. Many are using Haddock, I will also use Haddock. No, try to evaluate all of them with your system rather than tutorials and then try to compare and have an understanding how far these are coming along with your expectations. And then you decide which is appropriate approach or protocol or tool for your uh, research problem. And check the reliability of the data used. Because even though you're downloading a PDB from RCSB or EDI, ensure what is the quality of that particular structure. Don't think that all the structures are having good quality. And what is the uh, positions of amino acids in Ramachandran plot? So this, these things are going to help you a lot about it. Now, to understand few things uh, more, uh, force field selection is important criteria. How to select proper force field? You have to read about it. Uh, first, to read about some of the reviews where force field uh, optimization benchmarking of force fields being done. So you will be able to understand for what kind of proteins or nucleic acids or lipids or uh, organometallics or metallic ion compounds, what kind of uh, force fields being already tried. And then you uh, try to use the same thing and try to benchmark it. And if you say, I don't have time for that, uh, you should find time for uh, getting reliable data. So. It's a trial and error in some cases, not in all cases. In most of the cases, when you read and understand the previous reviews, you understand which is the best force field that could be applied for my uh, for the type of data I have considered. 
So it, it all depends on that. And also, uh, uh, what to do if the crystal structure having more than one ligand or a cofactor? That's where you have to define. Uh, that's where you have to. I, I told you you have to define your site properly. Understand the catalytic triad or the site. Understand motif. Each of the site might be having specific functionals. What is your object of doing the docking? Is it a specific? Uh, a functional that you're going to upregulate or downregulate. So focus on that particular site. When you're using a tool and predicting the pocket, might be the pocket which is having a larger volume or a higher volume is the first pocket. Not necessarily your focus of functional site. So that's why I specifically mentioned when you're finding out a binding site, understand the key amino acid and what is the role of those amino acid, whether it is going to upregulate or downregulate your mechanism. Uh, this is what uh, we have to do. Now, how to evaluate software? Uh, evaluation of software is always done with experimental data. For example, you have already a paper and you have somewhat similar kind of proteins, may not be the same disease or functional, but similar kind of protein uh, like a dimer or uh, uh, the compositions are somewhat similar with multiple cofactors and multiple ligands. And you can pick that uh, paper where they have done both molecular docking and experimental. Try to replicate that using by doing it by yourself in different tools and see how and compare it with the data of the experimental. When I'm asking you to compare the data with experimental, please do not plot a correlation plot between the score and binding energies with the binding affinity, which is in nanomolar and micromolar no please never do that try to see the trend how far the trend of the binding affinity predicted from the software is the trend within the binding affinity predicted again using the experiment why i'm saying predicting there could be experimental variability also we don't know how many times they would have repeated the experiments to report the mean and the standard deviation so there could be also a variability experimental errors are very well known anyway so if you are able to meet that trend and somewhere similar and if you are able to compare then the software x y z if the y is giving somewhat closer to what they have done pick that up that is what software evaluation now if you say i don't have time uh, that evaluation time that you have spent is a major time that you're going to use for your project because once it is evaluated, then you're just putting in your PDB and you know the site and docking and finishing it off because it's already benchmarked and validated. So after doing the docking and you show some result to someone and they say, no, this is not acceptable. Why to do that? And you have to redo it, right? So better evaluate and you know what you're doing and you have a confidence on your result, then it's all good, right? So this is how uh, we have to uh, move forward. So uh, being this is a very short and quick video, I'm uh, uh, concluding it right now. So the next topic uh, will be on uh, what is the importance of 3D QSR? Uh, why everybody is looking at 3D QSR and what are the disadvantages of it? And then I'll be doing another session, how to choose PDB for docking, because that is something uh, many of the students used to ask me. And I'd like to thank uh, many forum discussions and contributors like ResearchGate and many others, uh, my mentor students and many feedbacks which is helping me to uh, learn every day. Of course, to prepare these uh, four slides, uh, I have to spend more than two, three hours because uh, even though we know uh, what we're doing, but still uh, data is, uh, I mean, many things are getting updated every day. Different people have different views and from their experience, they also share their knowledge so we have to incorporate everything when we are trying to share to others, especially to the young minds. So see you in the next video. Thank you so much.